let's talk about hacking concepts, hacking types, and hacking phases. So what is hacking? It's a very broad term. <laughs> if you watch movies, if you read the media, you think of hackers <laughs> like this. You know, I'm, I'm maliciously breaking into something. The hackers themselves um, will say that when you're hacking something, you're, you have intellectual curiosity. You want to see how something works. You want to take it apart, possibly look for vulnerabilities. They say that um, hacking is different from cracking where you have malicious intent. So you can be an ethical hacker trying to make sure that you catch the vulnerabilities up front as opposed to a malicious cracker who's actually trying to break in for no good reason. They're up to no good. So um, hacking is exploiting system vulnerabilities and compromising the security to gain unauthorized access to system resources. We're trying to modify the system or trying to modify some, some kind of feature to achieve a goal. And if you are malicious in intent, we'll use it to steal and re redistribute intellectual property, which then hurts the business. So who's a hacker? Well, um, presumably somebody who has some skill with a good computer uh, and some networking skills, and, um, or it could be somebody who's just a hobbyist, or it could be someone who's a script kitty who really, frankly, doesn't know what they're doing or why they're doing it or how it works. They're just taking a tool someone else has written. Um, or you could have anyone who's trying to gain knowledge for legal or illegal purposes. So there's a huge broad range of what defines a hacker. And actually, what's the difference between a hacker and a um, administrator? The intent, right? All sorts of hacker classes. The black hat, someone with malicious intent. The white hat, someone who's trying to uh, protect the system. The gray hat, someone who doesn't necessarily have malicious intent, but they are um, morally neutral. They, they just have intellectual curiosity. The suicide hackers, they don't care if they get caught. They're so um, angry or so um, uh, fed up or caught up in something. The script kiddies, people who frankly don't know anything. Um, and uh, they just do, they just use a tool. The cyber terrorists or the state sponsored hackers. Now, the state sponsored hackers will have huge amounts of money and resource at their uh, uh, command. Um, the cyber terrorists, uh, we're, we're, they're terrorists, but they're using the, um, the web or uh, networks to do their terrorism. Or the hacktivist, someone who believes in a cause and wants to usually deface a website or take down a business or an organization that is contrary to their cause. Uh, the phases of hacking, you start out with recon, reconnaissance. You're trying to figure out, you're trying to case the joint. So with reconnaissance, we're, we're just looking, we're watching, we're observing. And for good penetration testing, your recon is going to take a, a lot of time. Uh, that's because you don't want to waste any time on things that are not going to have a high, uh, high chance of success. So it's like rattling the doorknobs, watching people come and go. It's, it's like the burglar who cases the joint well before they try to break in. It's the same thing, recon. We're doing reconnaissance. Um, so we do some reconnaissance. And the reconnaissance can be passive and active. We'll talk more about that soon. In the active reconnaissance, we'll be scanning. We'll scan systems for vulnerabilities. Then we gain access, we hope. Then we maintain access. Then we clear our tracks. So you can also think of it as recon, passive and active, penetration, control, and then cleaning up so that no one catches you. So reconnaissance, this is a preparation phase. We're gathering information. Um, we could come back to it in the future. We might have to come back to it in the future. And uh, we could do our recon against systems, clients, employees, networks, operations. And our recon could be passive, mostly gathering information without interacting with the target, either system or company or network. And so we'll do a lot of um, research on the internet. And then active recon, where we're actually interacting. We're scanning, we're calling, we're doing social engineering, we're contacting people, um, we're scanning systems, we're looking for vulnerabilities. So with active recon, we're trying to actually interact 
to get more information. Passive helps us identify, okay, what avenues, what attack vectors should we take? Active Recon then is, okay, now we're gonna try these to see which, just start rattling doorknobs and seeing if windows are not secure to see which ones are the most likely way for us to get in. In scanning, scanning is before the actual attack. We're scanning for uh, systems, it's, it's part of a recon. We're scanning for systems, we're scanning for ports, we're scanning for protocols, we're scanning for vulnerabilities. We're trying to identify the way in which we're going to attack these systems and get in. Then we actually try to run the exploit. We try to gain access. So um, this is where we try to break into the operating system or the application or the network. Once we have gained access, if we need to, we'll escalate our privilege, um, either on the system or the network or on other systems. Um, and so examples, password cracking, buffer overflows, denial of service, session hijacking, just to name a few. Once we're in maintaining access, we want to take and retain ownership. See, we don't want to have to keep on kicking in the door to get in. We'll kick in the door once, or we'll, yeah, then we'll just plant a back door, like we'll copy the key to the back door kind of thing, or we'll open up some little window so we can get in. Uh, so the, when we come back, that maintaining access should be subtle and quiet and go a long time before it's discovered. So we'll use backdoors and rootkits and trojans to keep other people from uh, retaking ownership. We could upload or download malicious software, we could manipulate data, we could manipulate applications or configurations so that we have this maintained access. And uh, we'll use this compromise system to launch even further attacks against other systems in the network. Now we wanna clear our tracks. We wanna make sure that we hide our malicious activities. Um, and so we intend to keep on maintaining access. We intend to remain unnoticed. Um, we want to delete evidence that we've been there to avoid prosecution. So usually clearing tracks is clearing out logs. So there's no, um, there's no uh, trail of what you've done. Just clearing out logs in and of itself is usually not enough. You, you got to make sure that um, you don't leave files or leave applications or, or leave things. And if you've modified things, you need to change their, their time and date stamp so that it doesn't look like they've been touched. So um, anyway, all of these things to make it harder to identify that we've been here. So that's all about hacking.